offensive coordinator, Adam Gase, and he told me that he will be limited in plays. He will only play about 20 plays, mostly on third down. He said partially that's because of some conditioning and also because of play calling, Jim. Yeah, he's had only now two practices in over three weeks. But we will see Welker reinstated this week. Now the Broncos won the coin toss, and they don't want to get that uh, Seattle defense out there right away, so they defer. They're going to kick it away to the Seahawks. And that's Brandon McManus, who once again is going to deliver a touchback. Never given Percy Harvin a chance. Harvin, of course, ran one back for a touchdown to open up the second half in the Super Bowl. Here comes Russell Wilson. Solid numbers, so often the case, and that's what happened in the matchup. Super Bowl 48, pair of touchdowns, no picks. His offensive line includes a rookie at right tackle out of Missouri, taken in the second round, Justin Britt. He'll see a lot today of Von Miller. And Marshawn Lynch, in that loss last week against San Diego, had only six touches for the afternoon. They ran only 38 plays. Getting beat by the Chargers 30 to 21 in the heat. A little play action and pressure on Wilson. He sidesteps it and going to take off and pick up about three. Well, Phil, you talked about a lot of the changes for Denver, prominent ones on this side of the ball. Terrence Knighton, though he started in the Super Bowl, was effective, and you think he's a big factor here today. Could be. Nate Irving at middle linebacker. Miller, Von Miller, of course, was out with a knee, did not play in that game. To leap signed in the offseason. In fact, that entire secondary for the Broncos, not a single one of them was a starter, or in some cases, even with the team last year, as they rebuilt it. And there's the handoff to Lynch. And he's got three. To set up third and five coming up. When you look at last week's games, let's look at this Seattle offense. Why were they mad about the fact that they lost to the San Diego Chargers? We were not physical enough. That's all you heard from them on both sides of the ball. They want to run it. You talked about Terrence Knighton. Well, if you want to stop the run, it always starts in the middle. Derek Wolf by that last run. But Terrence Knighton had a, did a great job in the Super Bowl against this offensive line, and he needs to do it again here today. Yeah, Knighton gets into his stance. Number 98 as they see Wilson's pass behind his target, Lynch. And a three and out to open for Seattle. Yeah, good job of this Denver defense. They think, hey, we got more speed on the defensive side, which they do. But it's not about, oh, they did it just for this football team. As Jack Del Rio reminded me quite sternly, look, if you want to be a good defense in the NFL, you got to be fast. And we saw it even there at the beginning. Faster containing Russell Wilson and getting to these receivers. John Ryan to punt in his seventh year for the Seahawks. Booting it away to a rookie out of Fresno State. Isaiah Burse. Burse backpedals, fair catch, 14-yard line. Now, how will this Denver offense begin? It was such a disaster from the very first snap back in New Jersey, Phil. Yeah, it was. Right from the beginning, just the communication. And I think, too, they got caught by the crowd noise in that Super Bowl. Didn't expect the Seahawks fans to be so loud they could have affected that opening play. But I know this, they'll be loud here today, Jim. The communication is a big deal for this Broncos offense. After a 61-yard punt, Denver's first snap from the 14. With two tight ends. And up the middle they go. And sneaking through a little hole is Monte Ball. The ball came out. The ball came out. Ball fumbles on the very first play. And Seattle has recovered. Recovered by K.J. Wright. And once again, Denver with a first snap disaster. Looked like a perfect start. A three and out. How about that blocking up front? And Earl Thomas pulls the football out. That's another thing the Seahawk defense did not do last week. They didn't swarm the football. And when you swarm it, three guys there, you start reaching for it and trying to pull it out. What a job by Earl Thomas. The very first giveaway by the Broncos here early in the season after two clean games. And you know, too, 
the blocking up front that time. Manny Ramirez, Vasquez, Franklin really kind of cross blocked it inside in a clean run by Monte Ball until he fumbled, of course. So Seattle will take over at the 23. Cam Chancellor and Earl Thomas, a couple of them right in the middle of that script. Lynch will shift back behind Wilson. And they'll go reverse and looking pass. It's Curse throwing it to Wilson. And with a helmet flying off by the defender, Wilson holds on a play that went for a touchdown today in Cincinnati for Andy Dalton, but in this case, 17 for Seattle. Going this way, somebody's got to stay outside to contain Russell Wilson. The fake, the reverse, and nobody sees him. Good job by Curse. And how about the old baseball player knows to look it in and is able to protect himself as Raheem Moore comes over. We saw that in practice. It worked almost identically, identical to what we just saw there, Jim. First and goal from the six. Lynch goes outside, cuts back inside, and it takes three Broncos to finally finish him off after a gain of three. That's the way to say it. It takes multiple guys to bring down Marshawn Lynch. It's, I, I saw it so much in the early games today, broken tackles, running backs, but he's quick, of course, powerful, gets outside, and what did Nate Urban say when you're tackling? Try to grab him and hope for people to help you bring him down. I don't know what the deal is with Raheem Moore's helmet, but it came off for a second straight play. Trying to cash in off the Monte Ball fumble. Second and goal. And again, it's Lynch. Lynch is about a foot out. Bradley Roby gets into the tackle. Good job, but DeMarcus Ware cuts him back inside. Crowd groaning over the replay, but I don't think that would be a, a winnable challenge. I do not. I think his knee was down before he got to the goal line. And it's so close. Pete Carroll's got that flag in his hands. He wants not to get the no from the coaches upstairs, so he puts it back in his pocket. Third and goal inside the one. Who else? Lynch. Knocked right away by Irving. And then help from others. And the Broncos' defense is able to make a stand on a loss of one. A lot of good start. Stuff at the start, you got to kick this field goal, Seattle does, but Nate Irving gets in there. Listen, week one, I said, boy, Nate, you were great. And he goes, oh, I was just okay. Made some mistakes. His standards are high, but what a run-stopping linebacker. What a job by this Denver defense in the first two series. Nate Irving, an old Russell Wilson teammate at North Carolina State, keeps Seattle out of the end zone. 20-yard field goal try, Oshka. And the kick is good. Well, Thomas stripped it. Seattle recovered. But on a goal-to-go situation, the Broncos defense is able to make the play. Back in Seattle with a quick field goal by the Seahawks. And you can follow all your favorite sports. Download the CBS Sports app now and get scores, alerts, and more all on your phone. Well, it's really early here, Jim. I know it's three to nothing, but Early returns, the Broncos, they can't get the right. You can see that with the defense and even the first running play. It's already the fifth time this season they have kept the opponents out of the end zone on a goal-to-go situation, including last week at the end against Kansas City to win it by seven. Looking down from the MetLife Limp, the loudest stadium in America, and the first ever opposing quarterback when this stadium opened in a preseason game was Peyton Manning back in 2002. Bill Vinovich is today's referee. Encroachment, 72 defense, five yard penalty. First down. And Michael Bennett. 
You look at this game, can't wait to see the strategy the Broncos take on the offensive side. I think they'll be conservative, be smart, respect this football team and the crowd. And if you want to beat the Seahawks here, there's really only one way to do it. You can't outthink them. You got to come in here and you got, you must out hit them. That's how you win in Seattle. First and five. They entrust the football with ball, fresh off his fumble. And it's a negative play, a big one. In fact, Chancellor and Meebane got him for a loss of five. This offensive line, Lady, of course, was out for almost the entire season last year. Franklin had started that Super Bowl at right tackle. He's now left guard. Julius Thomas has four touchdowns the first two weeks. And that's something to be concerned with if you're a Seattle fan after giving up three touchdowns last week to Antonio Gates. So they give back the five yards off the penalty. And it's a second and 10, clean snap. And across the middle, Peyton has his first target. It's Emmanuel Sanders in a gain of 12. Boy, he really anticipated the throw. Watch as it comes inside. Let's it go before Sanders is even making the cut. And Richard Sherman right behind him. Little tug on the jersey. So they challenge Sherman on their first pass attempt, and it's good for a gain of 12. There. Somehow squeezes out a yard. They were on him fast. The Seattle defense forced 39 turnovers last year, the most in the league, and that takeaway they had on Denver's first snap was just their second takeaway here of the season. And you saw Malcolm Smith. He was the Super Bowl 48 MVP with an interception return for a touchdown in that linebacking core. They're moving Virgil Green over to the left side. Peyton shifting some players around, loading up the tight ends here on second and 10. Play action looking and throwing and connecting again with Sanders at the 50. This one good for 17. Peyton Manning saw that it was single coverage on the outside. He changes the play. And Emmanuel Sanders, good play action fake. That's what you want to do. You get two tight ends in there. You can give Peyton Manning extra time. Play action passes to get it down the field. Nice sell to the inside by Sanders. That's what got him over to the outside. And a good throw by Manning. Peyton was hit after he threw it and was knocked down by Michael Bennett. First down play actions with two tight ends. That gives him time to throw it deep. Shotgun from the 50. And into the flats he goes. And he's got Virgil Green for about 10. It'll be interesting. He's going to go a little hurry up. The one thing I thought they would do is not run around and shift. Get in position so Peyton Manning can call the play and kind of keep the tempo quick against this defense. They got tired last week. Phillip Rivers took advantage of it. The Broncos hope to do the same thing. Ball behind his center and a gain of three. Peyton comes into this game with 497 career touchdown passes. Three of them only the second all time to reach the 500 milestone. Second to Brett Favre. So far on the season, six touchdowns, no picks. All of his touchdown throws have come in the first half. Facing a second and seven. And ball again. Colliding with three Seahawks. And he's about three yards short of a first after a gain of four. Third down on the way. Well, my coach a little, Jim. Stay up inside where your good blocking is. Up inside, Ramirez and Vasquez and Orlando Franklin. They're big, they're strong, and when you go sideways against this defense, they're fast, you'll get a loss like they did on that one run. Pretty successful so far, running right at the Seattle defensive line. And in for the first time, near side is Wes Welker. Third and three, and Peyton pump fake, finds the second option, and has the first down with Julius Thomas, down to the 22 in a game of nine. This is what happened to this defense last week. They got in third and five and less. Manning's going to check it to the back, sees the coverage. The linebackers followed his eyes, and he was able to pull over the football back and throw it where Bobby Wagner had vacated the middle of the field. Again, watch Welker now on a slot to the right. 
On first down, Peyton did a good job selling that play as he hands it to Ball. And he's got about five. Really good job up inside. And it's again, Tim, it, it is. Just take it right to him. Me being 92, what a job by the center, Ramirez. Vasquez at the right guard position, getting another good block. Denver with 42 consecutive points. Scored, that is, in red zone possessions, and the ball is dropped by Demarius Thomas. This is what happened to him week one on his first target. He tried to go north-south before he secured the football, and it ended up being a very off game as he couldn't let go of that opening drop in the victory against the Colts. Rebounded last week with a touchdown. Well, receivers can always feel the presence around them, and that time the Seahawks defense was flying up there to stop that screen. He knew it, tried to react too quickly, and that's why he dropped it. Third and five from the Seattle 18. Great effort to back in for the first by Sanders, and he takes it to the 10. A lot going on the right side of the offense, and you're thinking it's going to go to this side. Three receivers, but watch the route by Sanders coming in and out. Good sell again by Sanders, and he beats Maxwell to the outside. And Peyton Manning right away got off of that three-receiver combination to the right and found the single to the backside. Sanders with three catches for 37 yards on this drive. And on first down, they swing it over. The pass cut. And on the run, Sanders is tripped up after a pickup of four. That, for a moment, looked like he might kick it into a gear. But the Seahawks closed in on him. Good job by Peyton Manning. High snap. Able to get rid of the football and softly over to defender to Sanders. Sanders just kind of slipped, making the turn and cut second and goal. So close to the crowd, having a hard time communicating here with one second to go on the play clock. And it's ball who almost was dropped for about a three-yard loss by Schofield and able to pick up one. Interesting watching the Broncos. Crowd noise. Manning can talk when everybody's around him. But they have a silent snap count, so he doesn't have to holler. And he has all those hand signals to the wide receivers. So they are very well equipped to handle this crowd noise here in Seattle. Five wides, third and goal. In zone and incomplete. He was going for Julius Thomas. He had what he wanted. He had the defender on the outside. And Thomas, watch it, sells it out. And then bends it back in. That's a really well-designed play. But that was a tight window. And a terrific drive, drive that time by the Broncos. So McManus will be out for a 24-yard field goal attempt. Two for two on the season. First year kicker out of Temple, who was in camp with the Giants. Got waved, and the kick is good. So the Broncos have now scored. Again, this red zone possession streak continues, dating back now to the last 12 regular season games. 3 3, first quarter. Thursday, your football week starts here. Gonna go to the NFC East for the Giants and Redskins. Another big-time matchup in prime time, Thursday Night Football on CBS and NFL Network. Two quarterbacks that were hot today, Kirk Cousins, Eli Manning. The Giants getting their first win, taking care of the Texans. All right, see a difference in this, in this game. Two tight ends for the Broncos, making it harder those for the edge rushers. And Peyton Manning getting rid of the football very quickly. Again, Harden and his dangerous return skills taken out of play thanks to the kick by McManus Wilson come back out to the 20 when we come back you can't visit here without going down and experiencing this down at Pike's Market I'm taking some salmon home yeah you are I heard that yeah who's gonna cook it 
I'll take care of that. Really? Do a little grilling. Yeah. You know, your wife has never told me about your cooking, so I don't know if I believe you. Well, good step. Good start to this football game. Wilson. Play action and a completion for about seven to Percy Harvin. Let's talk a little bit about Russell Wilson here in his third year. Such a dynamic personality. Went to NC State and played baseball as well. Could have been playing in Denver. Was drafted by the Rockies. He got a year also after graduation at Wisconsin. Nothing but success there. Taken in the third round. There were questions about his size. I think our producer yesterday, Lance Merrill, said it best. When you meet him, you think they've taken a 6'4 man and made him 5'11. Because he is a big man who happens to just be 5'11. Yep. Well, you know, you go to these combines and everything, and they just can't measure somebody's heart. Well, his talent, too. Uh, yeah, he's got great heart, but look at these names now in competition against these elite quarterbacks Brady, Rodgers, Breeze. 12 touchdowns, and Manning. no picks. All victories against the big four. Yeah, six and zero. Oh. He's got a third and two. Lynch after a gain of about one. And it's going to back up the Seahawks five. Ball start. Offense number 68. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Of course, this week you're going to see a lot of season premieres on CBS, including tomorrow, The Big Bang Theory. Don't miss back-to-back -back new episodes on its new night, tomorrow at 8, 7 Central. Only CBS. Two pre-snap penalties already on the Seahawks here at home. Well, this changes the defense philosophy on, on, for Denver greatly. Third and seven. Scrambling, they got hold of him for a sack. That's Vaughn Miller, and again, Miller was not a part of the equation. He'd blown out his knee in December last year, was not at the Super Bowl, and he's got a sack and a loss of three. To the right of your screen, Vaughn Miller, what a push on number 68. Justin Britt just gets him going backwards. It opens up the lane, so when Russell Wilson takes off, he falls off inside. That's a, a matchup we want to watch. Right tackle, Justin Britt against Vaughn Miller and DeMarcus Ware today. And the Broncos never got to Wilson in the Super Bowl. No sacks, but they've got one here in the opening quarter. As Tron Ryan again with a booming kick. Burst at the 15, shakes off the first hit. Curses on him. He breaks that one. Cuts it to the outside and slashes near the 30. Very nifty return by the rookie. As his coach told us, his stage right here, it's not too big for him. Got a 15-yard run back after a 66-yard punt. Back here at the city off the Puget Sound, Taya Leone heads to Washington in the premiere of the new CBS drama, Madam Secretary. It's tonight after 60 minutes on CBS. First down throw, and flags are out. That pass was headed to Demarius Thomas. Holding, defense number 41. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. They got Byron Maxwell with that flag. Well, they're not gonna be afraid to throw the football at Richard Sherman. First throw of the day to Sanders inside. That coverage is pretty good, though. You got to be careful. And then the other thing, get rid of the football quick. How about that? Under two seconds. That's one big key for Peyton Manning in this offense. Keep nickel diming the plays. March down the field. Good situations. Don't hold the football. On first down, it's just a one-yard gain with Emmanuel Sanders' fifth catch. You know, I always say this, Jim. We talk about the Seahawks and how people play them. you you got to play the game of chicken. Don't break first. And what I mean by that is don't go out here and go, oh, we're going to find a way to get that big play and score because the longer you hold the football, 
the greater chance that defensive pass rush has of getting there and changing this game around. And when we talked to the Broncos last night, they just kept talking about positive plays. We don't care if it's a yard. We just can't afford negative plays, which they very nearly got right there. No gain for ball. Patience, that's the word, patience. And I know these outside run, that's the second time they've done the stretch once to the right, once to the left, and both fail. Final seconds of the first quarter and a third and nine for Manning and the Broncos. And he's going to take that snap to the second quarter. 3-3 three, three after one. We'll return to Seattle after these messages. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Richard Sherman talks to the side judge. You can see that's very surprising, even though it's just through two weeks. Worst third down defense in the league through two games. They've given up two out of three conversions so far today as the Broncos face another one here. Third and nine to start the second quarter. Will they drop back, let them catch it short, and rally for the tackle? That's what they're known for on the defensive side. Two tight ends. Manning now, after several adjustments, goes draw. He has Virgil Green with the carry for maybe a yard. And hey, listen, I am not going to sit here and go, oh, what a conservative call. I think it just tells you how they're willing to play this game today. Third and eight, the, the pass rush here at home is great. You throw it short, they everybody runs and hits you. That's how they get fumbles. So the Broncos, good play there on third and long. Yeah, it's the uh, second career carry for Virgil Green. I remember he had one in the AFC Championship game against New England. For a good size game. It's his Walters on the return. Near the 30, Brian Walters, fifth year out of Cornell, and Barrow on the special teams tackle. 44-yard punt. So that, that game, that loss, one so one-sided, created all kinds of uh, changes in the offseason. The philosophy at Denver, we got to get faster, they said, and more physical. So they got T.J. Ward, by way of Cleveland free agency, to leave from New England. And, of course, where from Dallas after seven Pro Bowl seasons with the Cowboys? Well, this Broncos defense wasn't a great week for them last week, but Jack Del Rios, Rio said, we battled, we persevered. And he says, make no doubt about it. We're going to be better this week. I know it's early, one quarter, but it was a really good first quarter. With the trickery and the shifting and the handoff in the end to Lynch, and he's got a hole for about 12. Tackled down by Brandon Marshall. Everything they do with the Seahawks deep offense is about, there's the speed sweep to Percy Harbin, fake it, then the cutback by Marshawn Lynch. But it's all designed to do what? To help their running game. The boot passes where Russell Wilson fakes one way, runs the other, faking the sweep to Percy Harvin. Hey, it's all to open up what? Running lanes for big number 24. Now has as many carries, six, as he did all of last Sunday at San Diego. Here's Harvin on the wide receiver screen, double screen, and is pretty well covered up by the Broncos defense. Holds him to four. Broncos defense the last couple of weeks after big leads the defense had to kind of hold on at the end there was Roby the rookie denying Reggie Wayne on a fourth down throw late as the Colts were driving down seven and then at the very end and a goal to go situation with 15 seconds left Terrence Knight Terrence Knight and denies the Chiefs but Nate Irving had the perfect coverage that ball was not going to be completed so Virgil Green headed in after carrying it on the Broncos last snap. Here's a second and six. No kinds of time now Wilson flushed out. And he is shoved out by Brandon Marshall. Well, the coverage down the field is excellent. It's man-to-man -man coverage and nowhere for Russell Wilson to find a receiver. He looked to the right, nothing left, nothing there. Then he runs, trying to chip Von Miller. They're going to help out. Justin Britt as much as they can. 
Brandon Marshall who is getting a lot of playing time with Trevathan out early in the season. Trevathan was back at practice this week but inactive. Not to be confused with Brandon Marshall at the Bears who makes more in one game check than Brandon Marshall makes in an entire season. And Brandon Marshall at the Broncos at a stunning two and the Woodville. We were talking to Monte Ball yesterday. That's a first down carry by Lynch. And he was talking about the balance that he sees out of Lynch. And he has this wobbling kind of movement, said Ball. And we saw it right there. We it, really it, did. Yep. He just, what he does is he comes across, he's able to get his feet wide, and he plants and goes back and forth. And even if you hit him while he's on one foot, he's got that wide base, all the weight on one side. And it is a hard man to bring down. He was a player talking about Marshawn Lynch recruited by Pete Carroll to go to USC. He did not end up going there, went to Cal, but that was one man he targeted when he took over the Seahawks job. And he got him in a trade from Buffalo. And here is Lynch. This time stacked up, and it was Knighton who slowed down the whole thing, had contact early by the ankles. Let's go down to Tracy. Well, thanks. You just saw it earlier. Broncos tight end Virgil Green going into the locker room. It is concussion-like symptoms. He's taken in for evaluation. Right now, his return is questionable, Jim. All right, well, that's uh, kind of key here because they've oh. been talking about wanting to go two tight ends most of the day. Yes. Well, they still have Jacob Tammy, but he's not the same player as Virgil Green is. Virgil Green can do the, all the dirty work. A really good lead blocker can block pass rushers. We'll see if it changes the game plan for the Broncos. Turbin in it, running back second and 10. And Ward gets to him in a hurry. T.J. Ward. As Turbin, who had just come into the game, did not protect his quarterback. Oh, he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. And the speed of Ward, oh, he sits way too shallow and squares up and tries to push him around, but it's... If you watch it to the left side of your screen, he just opened up the door for T.J. Ward to go right by him. That's tough. You know, your first play in there, Jim, you got to get loose, got to get a hit to get involved in the game. You get a blitz from the outside. Usually, running backs get the blitzers from inside so they can square up on the outside. Much harder to block them. And a loss of 10, third and 20. Second sack already for the Broncos, and they're looking for another one. And Wilson goes to the sideline. They rule it a catch at the 41, short of the first. Doug Baldwin needed 20. They got 14. Good job by the defense. My gosh, they're containing Russell Wilson in the pocket. Baldwin's not even looking for the football. What a throw by Russell Wilson. But Pete Carroll, he knows the deal, too. No gambling in a game like this. Takes it to the ground. Feet were in. And they brought out John Ryan on fourth and six. Remember, you got a rookie back there inside the 10 for the Broncos. He's not doing anything too foolish. Fair catch. He's going to try to field it. He does cleanly at the six. Good kick by Ryan, too. 35 yards, but it pins him inside the 10. Denver comes out, shotgun formation, and they're running. Ball was tackled by Marsh for no gain. The last September loss, we were there, Phil, was in Denver. Houston beat them. But seven wins since, averaging nearly 40 points a game. That 38.7, that's about what they averaged last year. Second best season average they had scoring-wise all time to the 1950. Rams, second and ten. And with his first catch of the season, it's Wes Welker. Well, you know, one of the reasons why they're so good in September, why do you think it is, Jim? Let's see who's down on the field. Oh, yeah, number 18. Yep. So they go to training camp. They know what they're going to do. They fine-tune it. So when the season starts, they're not saying, oh, we're a work in progress and all this other stuff you hear by everybody else. they got a game plan. They attack it. They execute it. That's why they're a fast starting team. And as Zott, he's thrown 27 touchdowns without a pick over an eight-game stretch of September games. He's got a third and six, and he's got a first down. Back-to-back -back receptions by Welker. This one for nine. It's the bunch formation. When you get three receivers together, here they are. It makes the defense back off. 
and they spread the outside guy, the inside guy, and Wes Welker comes right in the middle and hooks it up. And I guarantee you, before the ball was snapped, Peyton Manning said Wes Welker will be open. So they get out of the pinch. Out to the 20, first down run, draw, and Bell battles to get back to the line, but doesn't. It's a loss of one. And we're going back down to Tracy Wolfson. Well, guys, Demarius Thomas just came off the field in a lot of pain. He's been struggling with that left foot. We saw it last week in pregame when he heard it. They massaged it out. It looks to be real bothersome for him right now. They took off his shoe, looked at him, sent him back in the game. But right now he's on the sideline struggling, guys. Yeah, he does not have a catch here through the first quarter and a half. Second and 11. As Manning goes sideline, and he's got Emmanuel Sanders for another first down. Ooh, that was beautiful. That really was the timing once again. You can tell. This is what they call a tight game plan by the Broncos. Down below, Sanders, Maxwell in the coverage. He sells it with the head fake, and when he turns, Manning right on target with the throw. No hesitation. When I say a tight game plan, not doing a lot, not a lot of movement, that way they eliminate the mental mistakes and they can play fast and hard. And that's a carry by C.J. Anderson who's given them some good glimpses early in the season. This one a loss of one. Look, Demarius Thomas back on the field. That's a big deal. But you can't, I know you're sitting at home, you go, oh, come on, these runs. Look, you got to stay patient. The pace of the game, if you keep running the football, you sooner or later are going to pop a few of these for some good games. Second and 11. Coming after Manning, who is able to get it away for one yard gain to Anderson. Earl Thomas, fastest safety in the NFL. And this is just one of the many reasons why this defense is so good. Because he can diagnose plays that maybe somebody else wouldn't have got there, and that would have been a 10 yard gain. Earl Thomas can turn those 10-yard gains into nothing. Same thing. If you throw it underneath, they're hoping to make the tackle before you get the first down. Third and 10, and again, they run it on third and long, and the Seahawks are wise to that. Got a flag out on the far side. Well, that was timing. Almost looked like it caught Peyton Manning by surprise, the snap. Illegal motion, offense number 80. Penalties declined, result of the play, fourth down. Well, one thing for the Broncos, they did begin this series back at their own seven, so field position, 3-3 game. They're not walking off the field disappointed. It, that, it's, Jim, it's almost a victory. You walk over there, now you're going to change field position and see if the other team's offense can sustain a drive against your defense. Britton Colquitt. He is out for the second time. Very consistent, strong leg. Well, this is a heavyweight fight. We got a lot of close rounds. Colquitt. Beautiful. Sends a spiral. 55 yards in the air to Walters. And it's Barrow having a big day on special teams, his Ooh. second tackle. Some guy named Barrow. Oh. Yeah, like our producer. Oh. <laughs> Sleek and fast. Back with Bill Sims and Tracy Wolfson. And just a field goal on each side here with 5.27 to go second quarter. Jim Nance on the call. And Russell Wilson. And the Seahawks start from the 27, this drive. He's got his tight end, Miller, for a pickup of four. Yeah, we're, we're seeing a little speed. What, what, what do they mean by speed on defense? It means a lot. But the, the big thing is, can you control Russell Wilson in the pocket? And here's Von Miller's going to get outside. And now when Russell Wilson makes the fake, Okay, as he goes out, well, Von Miller can chase anybody down this league, even Russell Wilson. So containing 
the boot passes. Don't let him get out there and run, and don't let him look down the field for those big passes. And it was T.J. Ward who held it to a four-yard gain, and second and six, and batted away, but the flag's out on Tlaib. No, no, nope. that's going to be offense. Okay. It's got to be. Tlaib, you have to know his techniques. It's Lockett who's going to be flagged for it. Ricardo Lockett. Yes, good job by him. Akeem Tlaib, I'll bet anything, he's watching the quarterback. Pass interference, offense number 83. 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. And he is somebody to really pay attention to. When he's watching you, let's, let's see what he does. Oh yeah, he's watching Russell Wilson. He sees him rear back, cuts right in the inside and lock it. Good job by him <laughs> yeah. turning and keeping the interception. He is terrific when he looks at the quarterback. One of the best in the NFL gym, and he can do it not from that press position, but being off, that's very rare. Second and 16, may have gotten Miller to jump. Pass incomplete over the head of Harvin. They love seams. Offside, defense number 58. Five yard penalty, still second down. First penalty on the Broncos today. The Verizon halftime report's coming up. JB, you see Tony and Coach Bart and Boomer. They'll have the scores and highlights, as well as a preview of the Thursday night game down in Washington. Well, you the know, Giants will be in town. We'll have that one, of course, Thursday night CBS and the NFL Network. Right, I'm sorry, Jim. We look forward to that. But, you know, Bill Cowher is probably sitting back going, finally, this is what I call a football game. <laughs> three to three, and it's living up to everything I thought it would be. Absolutely. Second and 11. Make it the hard to go the other way to Lynch. Oh, Lynch into the second and Wolf rides him down at the 48. That's 21 on that play. They run so many plays to Percy Harvin. They love him as a decoy. He's over here. They're going to fake it to him. And then what do they do? They go to the left side, and there's Marshawn Lynch. So. You know, Jim, they get you looking, chasing Percy Harvin, then they throw the screen to the backside. That's what this offense really does well. They go off of some of their tendencies and have about four plays a game. We've already seen that one, the throw back to the quarterback. Those were unique plays just for the Broncos. That was the longest play by either side of the game, 21. It's down, and a little flip back, and push into the Denver 40. The pass goes to Baldwin for 14 more. Hey, he just jumped up and ripped the football out of the air. Jack Del Rio said one of the most undervalued units in the NFL is this wide receiving group of Seattle. They're terrific blockers down the field. They're as tough as they come. And every one of them, when they get the ball in their hands, they try to act like they're running backs. They try to break tackles and run through and just be physical. Wilson has hit his last six throws. And he's passing again on first down for the big one. To the end zone, and it is all in by Lockett for the touchdown. They ran that play because of Tlaib breaking up the other curl route. So watch it, Tlaib is in good position the whole time, he's got him. But he just misjudges the ball right at the end and not able to keep his feet underneath there and lock it. I talked about these receivers, they don't panic. There is a toughness about them, we saw it last year and it's early this year but they're doing it again. That's the longest pass play of this young season for the Seahawks. 39 yards. Lockett with his third career touchdown catch in his second of the season. You know, they covered 73 yards and they got the offense going on that drive. Boy, it was a, listen, they had them backed up second and long, the offsides, but the screen play gave them momentum and then they took advantage of it. And this Seattle offense, Jim, they are they want to run the ball, and when they throw it, they're trying to do one thing. They are trying to get big yards. 
Almost every play they run today, Russell Wilson is looking deep before he checks it off or throws it shorter. That was a terrific throw, and a Lockett just ran under it and made the catch, of course. The house got called well to the back of the end zone, fields it. Peyton's hit 11 out of 13 for 87 yards, six of them to Sanders, but he's down seven. Well, between these two quarterbacks, 86%, they've missed only three passes. You can tell Peyton Manning on the left, get rid of the football, high completion percentage. Russell Wilson always looking to throw it down the field. They run it hard, they throw screens, and when they throw it, we set it, go deep to get the big play. They've got Tammy as the second tight end, as Green again is being checked for concussion-like symptoms. And Manning with some zip on that one. The ball comes out, it was caught by Thomas, and he fumbled it, was ruled a catch on the field. Malcolm Smith with the recovery. Beautiful design by the offense. Everything goes exactly the way they wanted to. Let's make sure it's a catch. Up, got to get two feet on the ground. This time the laps. Uh, it's going to be close. It's very close. Yeah. We saw it in slow motion. It always looks like a catch. As he hits the ground, it's like boom the football comes out so let's watch it full speed if it's bang bang it's an incomplete pass but john fox has got to challenge this play oh it's a turnover so automatic. It's automatic sorry automatic review on a turnover demarius thomas is just not himself the ruling on the field was a catch and a fumble but it's of course, being reviewed as all turnovers are. We're going to bring Mike Harry in back in New York, our rules expert. Mike, what do you think the call is going to be here? Well, Jim, we have two of the three elements met. You got to control two feet down, but he didn't have enough time to commit a, a football act, pitch it, or something like that. This play is going to be reversed, and it's lucky for Denver. There you go, Mike. Very well. We'll see if you're 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 betting a thousand percent. So. Not that I'm keeping count. Yeah, I'm but, trying to catch up with you anyway. Yeah, there you go. Catch up with me. But you know what? Well, it's what happens. And the best way I've had it explained to me, this rule, just this. When you watch it full speed in life, if it's catch bang, you know, the ball comes out, then it's just incomplete. Instead of looking for the time elapsed where his feet on the ground, all the other stuff. Yeah, that's a good rule of thumb, but you have to go to the details also. Right. Bill Venovich is ready to tell us. After reviewing a play, the ruling on the field is reversed. The receiver never had possession of the ball when he came down to the ground with two feet. The ball did not have the ball long enough. Incomplete pass it'll be. Pass. Great. Great job, Mike. Once again, you're right. Well, sometimes you get lucky. Yeah, I'm sure the defensive players, as they see it on the field, they see it so often, they think, well, this has got to be a catch and a fumble. But once you understand the rules, Pete Carroll's trying to tell him he made a move once he came to the ground. Second and ten after all that. Thank you, Mike. The Broncos, the last time they blocked everybody up, gave Peyton Manning time to throw it down the field. And Manning goes long and out of bounds in the direction of Sanders. Back down to Tracy. Well, guys, it's official. Virgil Green is out for the rest of this game with the concussion, Jim. Okay. And we've seen Tammy in already on this series. As they were wanting to present a lot of two tight end looks. 
They've got Welker on the field now for a third and ten. Pressure, stepping up, firing, and wide, just wide of Demarius Thomas. I made the remark that Thomas just doesn't look like himself. No, he does not. And it's hard to play when something's bothering you, but good job in the pocket. It's a blitz. They're trying to get to him. Good movement by Manning. And listen, early in the game, it's still 10-3. to 3. When you miss, you've got to make sure you miss on the right side. He did that time, and there's no harm in this punting the football. Colquitt. Gosh, he just crushes it. That's 58 yards. And Walters is slammed down by Corey Nelson. Coming up, the Verizon Halftime Report. JB and Tony, Bart Boomer and Coach Cower, all the latest scores and highlights coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. This is since Russell Wilson came on the scene in 2012. Well, you know, we got to get rid of this. One. Yep. Because look at these numbers. They're, Jim, they're absurd. They really are. Points 522 to 224. 26 plus margin of turnover. Look at the penalties. It's, well, we know why they win. They're good. And that one thrown too low for Percy Harvin. And then Vaughn Miller may have had something to do with that yeah he did and you know you look at this denver defense they played man-to-man -man coverage russell wilson threw it over the top they love to throw it deep down the field on one-on-one -on -one situations and let their receivers fight for the ball kippy brown the wide receiver coach whatever he's doing with these seattle guys it's working so denver play it safe make them get a couple first downs see if you can make a play to get them off the field second and ten Lynch. Ahead for nine. Pete Carroll telling us he knew from way back when, when he got the Seahawk job. Yeah. Again, mentioned earlier, Lynch was out in Buffalo. He said, I knew he was a unique player, a high spirited guy. He had recruited him, didn't get him, but competed against him in the Pac 12. He wanted him. Well, Traded for him. You know what he got? Had to give up for Marshawn Lynch. Two fourth round picks. Well, it was a steal. We know that now, don't we? Two minute warning. First half, 10 3 Seahawks. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Seattle's going to be facing third and a yard. Two minute warning. This game going the way you thought it would? Yeah, it is. I thought it would be very physical. I think Denver from the Super Bowl, everything we felt, they wanted to come in here and show everybody they could slug it out with Seattle. Now, when you talk about this game and big plays, it doesn't always have to come from Peyton Manning. You'd like to see some big plays from the defense, and by that, I mean turnovers. You got the speed. You got these new guys in there. Lynch has got the first down. And Seattle has all three timeouts. Peyton Manning has advanced it into Seattle territory, just that one drive. And they kept it for over six minutes, and it resulted in a short field goal by McManus. Pass rush. You have two good ones on the outside. Can you make Russell Wilson throw it before he's ready? He's going to slide right, and he's going to run. And they say that he is out of bounds at the 48. Picks up four on the scramble. Yeah, good coverage down the field. And Von Miller being very careful as he's rushing the quarterback. It looked like he was more concerned with keeping Russell Wilson in the pocket than just going after him. Shows you the speed, too, because Russell Wilson, we talked about it. He might be 5'11", big hands, long arms, big shoulders, throws the ball with a very high release and played pro-style quarterback in college. That's why he adapted to the NFL so easily. Second and six with a minute and 12. And again, a 
Helmet comes flying off. This time it's Tlaib who was in on the tackle. Baldwin with the catch. Yeah, Baldwin did a really good job. He squared Tlaib up. And listen, they're so worried about the run and the inside plays that Tlaib is out there by himself. Good throw. Timeout called by Seattle. Minute and six to go, first half. Seattle has the football at the Denver 35. And a first down. Scoop, scoop, scoop. Right. Lynch gets the carry. And Lynch is slowed down by Ward, who had to wait for a couple of his teammates to finish him off, including Smith. Okun is down for Seattle. Their left tackle. Another good run by Lynch. I think what caught me is we, Opal Kuhn, of course, is it's not serious, but Lynch, Pete Carroll just said he's so flexible and so well conditioned that he can carry the load every single game. They do not worry about overusing it. Got a timeout charge to Seattle. As uh, there's big concern about their left tackle, their first round pick back in 2010 out of Oklahoma State. And now, Pete Carroll's gonna come out. Offensive lines, Jim, we've talked about it a lot. And the quickest way to let your football team fall apart is to have your offensive line get beat, beaten up or not able to perform the way you want them to. And this is one of the best left tackles in the NFL. As he walks toward the locker room, there he is, Phil. Going against DeMarcus Ware here. Oh, it's he's you could see that time right there. He was already falling and pulling his left arm up to his chest. So I, I again don't know, but and here the Denver Broncos. Now you've already given up the field goal try. The biggest thing you can do, protect the end zone. Let them have the field goal try. Don't let them get over the top. You saw Alvin Bailey at left tackle now and second and two. The Denver defense. Contains Lynch for no gain. It was Vaughn Miller in first, maybe a yard. Really good job. They didn't get distracted by the fake sweep. Percy Harvin coming across. Nice block across the field. And Vaughn Miller fights off the block and makes the tackle. Third. They love that place, yeah. Third and one inside 30. That's good for the first. As Harvin steps out of bounds. Pushed out by Chris Harris Jr. Gain of nine. Great throw by Russell Wilson, Jim. Just watch him. Leans back. What do you talk about baseball? Sometimes you got to flip the football just like you're turning the double play as he played second base. And beautiful throw on the run. Percy Harvin so fast. There's not much Chris Harris can do there. Third catch for Harvin. For Look at the clock. I'm sorry. 23 yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah. With one on the play clock, just got the snap away in time. And they're in on Wilson in a hurry. Somehow, Baldwin was able to escape a hit. And it's 17 seconds. The ball is down at the five. Pick up a 12. And, and why, I'm sorry, Jim, I interrupted you. 23 seconds as a defense. Know it. Tackle him in bounds. Make him use the timeout. Now you 
the missed tackles. Seattle had a lot of them last week, a miss there. He's able to get those extra yards, and now everything is in play for the Seattle offense. Baldwin goes wide to the left. They're going to go spread here. Because you definitely have to keep your eye on the quarterback running. And Seahawks again with one timeout. From the five. Works in to the end zone and a touchdown with Lynch. But the flag is out. Holding. Defense number 25. Pretty good when your quarterback, he looks it off again. Marshawn Lentz against Brandon Marshall. Big, one of the most powerful running backs in the NFL. What a pair of hands, he made that look easy. Two touchdown passes in the quarter by Wilson. In fact, two touchdowns in less than three minutes. Two minutes and 53 seconds to establish a 14-point lead. Well, they're just not able to get to the quarterback, and he's so elusive, and then Von Miller makes a great move, gets right in Russell Wilson's face, and what does he do? He just kind of steps back, flips the ball sidearm to Percy Harvin, and that kind of just changed, the, changed this game around. Oh, the quick slant underneath. Now you got to fight your way through the inside offense and defensive player. So they split out Lynch, and he had one-on-one -on -one coverage provided by Brandon Marshall, and he just right up. Most of the had NFL. a little difficulty getting to that one. Of course, Denver 12 seconds. They got time now. They're already thinking about what are we going to do in the second half? Because does this make your offense panic a little? Well, you don't want to panic right away, but you've got to start thinking about, look, we can't be quite as conservative as we were in the first half. Of course, Denver deferred at the start, so we'll see the football to start the second half. Peyton just shaking his head. Well, the Denver defense was playing awesome, and they got go back second and long the screen the offsides and the screenplay just turned it around and it just seems like seattle plays so much on emotion and when they get the emotion on their side they just they keep it going that's good nine yards deep coldwell steps up and takes a knee jim let's just go look at that series you thought well they're struggling they're going to stall then they go with the old fake Throw it to screen right to Percy Harvin, screen left. Look at the area, nobody over there. And they get the first down, and man, you know, now you got field position, you feel good. One-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. A keep to lead hesitates. That little hesitation allows Lockett to get by him. And this is, that's, what's, that's what turned this game around. And then followed by another touchdown drive, 10 plays, 68 yards. Don't expect the Broncos to try anything here. In fact, they're going to just take the knee. And Manning hustles to the locker room. Down 17 to 3. Seahawks total 175 yards in that quarter alone. That's the end of the first half. Seattle leads at 17 to 3. Back with the Verizon halftime report. After this message and a word from your local station, you're watching the NFL on CBS. champions leading in the rematch game 17-3 as we're moments away from starting the third quarter 
Here's a look at the DirecTV Ultimate Picture Cam. It was 3-3. Mid-second when Russell Wilson found Ricardo Lockett needing to lead. 39 yards out for the touchdown. John Fox and his Broncos held to 102 total yards in that first half. And that is the fewest total yards in the first half in the Peyton Manning era at Denver. Yeah, it's Indianapolis, Kansas City can't even compare those defenses to Seattle's and the circumstances they're playing under, of course, here in this stadium. So this will mark the first time as we kick it that Denver has trailed in the second half. Your week three of the season. Now Schick will force the Broncos to start from the 20. We heard from the gang back in the studio. What do you think we're going to see in the second half? Well, everybody is like, why are they so conservative? I'll tell you why. There's two things. First, that was the game plan. And why was it the game plan? Because of the Super Bowl, they spread it out, and they tried to throw it down the field, and what happened? It backfired. Peyton Manning got sacked. He threw an interception. He got a fumble on him. So they were trying to play a different style here today. To get back in this game, yes, the offense needs to make plays, but more importantly, the Denver defense has to get quick stops, and they got to find a way to get some turnovers. Of course, Denver turned it over on its first play, but hasn't again. It was Ball who fumbled on that first play for Denver, but this time takes the screen pass for or the little pass for two yards. Let's go down to Tracy Wilson. Well, thanks a lot. I actually asked John Fox about being so conservative. Will we see him open it up? He said the loss of tight end Virgil Green and what they wanted to do with the two tight end sets really affected them. That will be a big adjustment at the half point. Right. Okay, here is the carry by Ball. Got six out of that, but they'll have a third down on the way. Thomas on the tackle. Well, Tracy is right. What affects, what did it do? It changes formations. But the big thing two tight ends did for this offense, it gave Peyton Manning better protection, and he was able to throw it down the field. Now that corner has shortened for the Seattle pass rushes. Welker on the field, third and two. And incomplete going for Welker. Burley on the coverage, Marcus Burley. Marcus Burley is the extra defensive back that comes in for Seattle. And they are really happy with the way he has played. Very physical, up to the challenge. Everybody thought that Wes Welker would just come out here and just tear him up, and that's not the case so far. Welker with two catches, 12 yards. Burley seeing a lot of time in place of Jeremy Lane, who went on injured reserve with a groin injury. And his fourth punt. Covered down away, but he breaks it. And about a four yard return after a 47 yard punt. Going in this direction in the second quarter, Wilson left down the field twice for touchdowns in the second. The Seahawks and Broncos joined the NFL in celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. From players to coaches to owners to fans, many have left a lasting legacy on the league and hear their stories by visiting NFL.com slash Hispanic Heritage. First possession, second half for the leading Seahawks. And you said this is a big one here for this Denver defense. And Lynch falls for two. Yeah, good job that time, T.J. Ward. But look who's back on the field, number 76, Russell Kuhn. So that is a big deal for this football team. You can see the tape coming out uh, underneath his left shoulder pad. You know what that does, Jim? Now you don't have to worry about your formations and put a tight end over there in case your backup is in. And it just it frees up a play caller not worrying about uh, pass protection like they would if he was out of there. Second and eight. Big to Lynch. Of Off his feet. Forward progress. And it's a first down. Pete Carroll is over there to help lift them. Yeah, these guys don't care. Everybody pick them up. You'd have slammed them in the ground. I think Kirsch would have jumped up and said, thank you, sir. Because they are just a tough group. The outside release. And what happens is they got... 
Aqib Talib looking inside for all the crossing receivers. Curse who caught a touchdown in the Super Bowl. <laughs> but Russell Wilson, Jim, you can't get the pressure on him. You can't hit him. He moves with ease. And Lynch for a couple more, maybe three. Just to go over, just when you think you got it, you don't. Nothing's open as he looks down the field, so he moves out, slides forward. What did you just say to me a minute ago? He doesn't want to run, but if you force him, he will. And then what a move by Von Miller. Can't get away from him, so you just drop that arm and throw it sidearm. That was a big, big play in that second touchdown drive. They already have more time of possession in this game than they did all of last Sunday down at San Diego in the loss. Seven seven. Good piece of tackling by Chris Harris. On him right away for a loss of two. Well, if there's a team in the NFL should be good at stopping screens and these wide receiver bubbles or whatever you want to call them out there, it would be Denver. Why? They see it all during training camp. They practice against it so much with Peyton Manning. And that was a really good job by Chris Harris. What a job for him this year after being hurt and coming back and performing at an unbelievable level right away. He blew out a knee in the divisional right, we got, we got. round. So, of course, absent from the Super Bowl. Third and nine. Turbin flanking the quarterback. As uh, the completion, but where will they mark it? They're going to mark it short of the first. That's the first career catch for the second round pick out of Colorado, Paul Richardson. 17 to 3, middle of the field. You like the way your defense is playing, you don't even think you punt the football. How about the rookie here not running a deep enough route? Well, his first ever NFL catch, and he's going to be about half a yard short of the first. He's going to be disappointed by that, but you know what? He'll be really happy about that catch. Mm. So, but a good job by the defense. Know where the markers are and play accordingly. That was a big stop for Denver. Here's Ryan. At the 50. Gets the favorable bounce. And beautifully covered up by Jerron Johnson. Ryan gets the job done. MetLife providing the aerial coverage here on a spectacular day in Seattle and the Broncos once again backed up after a 43 yard punt. Third time they started inside their own 15. All of their possessions have started from the 30 and in. Ronnie Hillman seeing action now at running back. On the goal line, open over to Welker who darts out of bounds and a pickup of a quick six or seven. I was just looking, thinking, maybe it's time to give Ronnie Hillman a chance. We've been hearing John Fox, right, for weeks, Jim, talk about, hey, this guy's the real deal. Yeah, that's what he said exactly. we got to get him in the game. And if you're looking to make some plays, throw a short pass to a running back and see if they can make some people miss. Got to get him in the flow, he said. Of course, we heard that last week going into the Kansas City game, and it never materialized, never got that chance, and now seeing action for the first time. Second and three. And Sanders takes a good hit from Richard Sherman, but it's a 19-yard gain. Beautiful. They thought that maybe they could get Sanders across the field. And why? He's a, just quick and fast, and that time gets away from Johnson. Peyton Manning right on the mark. Seven catches for Emmanuel, 74 yards. It's the first first down for the Broncos in 13 minutes of game action. Underneath, there's him for six. Well, they got the momentum now, though. You can see just the quarterbacks are unbelievable. It's like there's so many things. Hitting your first shot as a basketball player gives you confidence. You get some rhythm. And this offense now going at a faster speed. Just don't have the negative play. Roman now with the carry. And... Tackled from behind, about a yard, a long yard, short, third down on the way. Keep the pace going. I'd almost expect a run here. He's behind you, quick run up the middle. Third and one up the middle, they go with a flag out. 
off sides, I think. Hillman was stopped short of the first. And Denver's pretty convinced it's going to go against Seattle. Although there might be some disagreement inside that official's huddle. Okay, there's no foul on the play. The defender did not get into the neutral zone. The runner is short of the line of the game. Fourth down and a half. Wow. Fourth and less than a yard. How is that not in the neutral zone? Well, yeah. It's not, he wasn't in the neutral zone, Jim. He was uh, way offside. He was actually yeah, he was in, the, in the Denver offensive the line. Football in the backfield. But I'd like to hear what the uh, convincing argument that one was to pick up that flag. So well, fourth and a yard. It's not only that, because of that penalty, they lost a half a foot or whatever. If it was one foot to go, they might have gone for it, but now it's a true yard. Forty-three yard punt. Fair catch by Walters. Be careful like the fact that they call offside. Seattle will have the football back. John Fox talked to the officials during that timeout. Not happy about the call he did not get. Let's bring Mike Harry in in New York. How was that not an offside penalty against Seattle? Would have given them a first down? Yes, Jim, that was offside. And unfortunately, the discussion led to a mistake because that was a big play for a first down. They'd like to have that one back. Instead, and that's not reviewable. Instead, Seattle has it on first down from the 17. And it's an incomplete. Mike, just to come back to you, how does that, the mechanics of that, yeah. someone threw a flag, so someone saw it, you know, right there live, and then someone had to convince them otherwise. Correct. So you have two guys on the line of scrimmage. They're both looking right down the line, and oh. one of them thought one way, and the other thought the other, and unfortunately, they went with the way that was a mistake. Well, you know what they do? They probably go with the one that shows the most force and comes in there, and he's the strongest, and... Boy, if you've got two people looking at one couldn't see that was an offside. That's, like you said, Mike, Jim, that's tough. Thank you, Mike. Second and ten. And the Broncos are able to take that play out for no gain. Lynch stopped. Lynch now with 15 carries for 51 yards. But the good thing is you got Seattle in a tough situation. A long time to overcome that mistake. And for field position and the momentum that the offense had, Jim, on the Denver side, if they can get this football back after a three and out, that really helps because now you're like, oh, what you did on that previous drive could still be with you. Third and ten. And a great tackle by Roby, the rookie yep. out of Ohio State, to hold that gain to eight to Zach Miller. Really well played because they stack the receivers and they stack them wide. They want the defenders to move off, but Roby waited, saw how they uh, switched, and he came up, and that was just pure contact right to the ground. So John Ryan to punt it to Burst. These punters, they punt the ball so far now, it's hard to change field position. Well, this like is another huge boot. Burris is backed up right away after fielding it. It was 57 yards. And Lockett, who caught the game's first touchdown, was on him right away. With NFL Now, you can access the biggest NFL video library on the planet. Select your favorite teams or players. And NFL Now delivers. NFL.com slash now. Well, that punt by Ryan that was so brilliantly covered by Lockett. Before they get down there in a hurry, they're gunners. Ryan has now pinned Denver inside the 20 on four of his five punts. 
They stay with Hillman as the running back and Manning over the top and it was dangerous for a moment over the head of Malcolm Smith who had that pick and run back back in New Jersey. Well, they got the bunch again, just trying to get those free releases. They got it. Well, that's just too slow. And takes too long, and Sanders didn't come out of the cut real fast. Like, maybe he wasn't expecting the football. And again, Demarius Thomas without a catch. He's on the near side. Manning goes underneath. And Hillman got turned around. But if Demarius Thomas caught 13 balls against the Seahawks in February in that loss, but the 13 receptions, a Super Bowl record for most catches. Again, none today. Well, that's right, none today. That is a big point in that Super Bowl, Jim. A lot of those catches came when the game was over. Yep. Yeah, he got... And you can tell his body language is not great. We don't know if his foot's bothering him. They've been challenging him at the line of scrimmage also. Third and ten. Is it intercepted? Stepping right in front of Welker, his chancellor. And they rule it incomplete. Hayden tried to anticipate it. Manning. There seems to be some confusion here. You got Wilson and the offense onto the field. And there was this one signal by an official. Chancellor reads it in the inside, comes in. And that... Yeah, the, the, both the defensive unit of Denver was on the field, and Wilson and the offense were out there, too. Everyone thought, player-wise, that it was a pick. Looked like the ball did hit the ground. They ruled it immediately incomplete. Yeah, no question about it. So, quick uh, shift changes by each side. Colquitt having a busy day. Coverage outstanding once again by Seattle. Denver brings it down to the 39 after a 47-yard boot. Bolden, the tackler. Still 17-3 as it was at halftime. We're back in this quarter. We've had only two first downs, five total drives, five punts. Russell Wilson, who told us yesterday, you've got to hit the reset button every day to get better, gain knowledge. He loves to ask questions, always striving to be his best. And here he is on first down, handing it off to Trubin, who swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. You know, he was so grateful, talking about the chance to be one of 32 people in the world yep. to have this job, a starting quarterback in the NFL. And everything he does, he acts like he's grateful. His work habits, how about his two ex-teammates? That got a great kick out of that. Talking about Nate Mont Irving and, and Monte, Monte Ball. Ball. One had played with him at NC State, the other of whom had played with him at Wisconsin Ball. We wanted a story. Does he go out, you know, give us something, and what was the answer to? You know, Nate Irving said in all of his years at NC State, he never went out once. Never went out with the guys. He just studied, worked, did his job. Second of any against fakes. He's chased by Jackson. And was able to get the pass away to Turbin. Who's downed after three by Marshall. So third on the way. Well, Jim, the defense has been doing good for Denver. Let's watch this last series. An incomplete pass. The timing off. Feels a quick pressure. Gets rid of it quick. Incomplete. And then the coverage. Really kind of lucky to get away with this one. Chancellor not quite quick enough to get that interception. So protection for Peyton Manning today has been pretty good, really good. They're getting rid of it quick, but the receivers, it's just not, they're not, it's not happening. Separation, people are not that open, the throws are tight. Third and seven. Up the middle, Wilson. He's run for the first down to the Denver side of the field. I'm not a superstitious person, Wilson told us. I just believe in good habits. Well, this is another good habit he has. Nobody's open, doesn't take a chance with the football, and that's about as hard as I've seen Russell Wilson hit in his career. A guy that runs, but he only runs when you force him to. He tries to you know, do the offense the proper way, 
but he just has an unbelievable ability to get down before he takes the big hits. Doesn't get beat up, can practice, keep getting better, and it shows. Gonna throw it here on first down. Going to Lynch. Ward forces him out, but another big gain, 12 or 13, maybe 14. Yeah, it's a really good job. Lynch is going to sneak out over here, but watch as he watches the routes come across the field. And he never panics. And here they come across the field. Oh, he doesn't like it. It's not open. Oh, let me throw it to my outlet receiver. The defense is sitting there going, man, we've done a great job once again, and look what happens. It's another first down. You can't rush him, Jim, full speed, because he just patiently and like, He's calm and just moves away from the rushes. You saw Lynch, 91 total yards, looking to add to it. He can back up a couple as Knight closes the door. And Saturday, the best game for the best conference, SEC on CBS, that is, Arkansas, battling Texas A&M, the Home Depot SEC on CBS. Brent Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Ali LaCourse. It all begins with the college football today, next Saturday, here on CBS. Pressure once again on the Denver defense, not only to stop this offense, but you have to be ready to take a chance to get a turnover. The middle running hard is Lynch. Running behind James Carpenter, his left guard. He's got eight. Yeah, number 77, Alabama. He is a special player. Back, look at those blocks in up in front. Gets down the field. Lost 30 pounds this year coming to training camp. Let me say this. If I told you, and look at what's going on so far here with the total yards. If I told you Seattle is the smallest football team in the NFL, would you believe it? Well, they don't look at in uniform, do they? Man, everybody looks like they're, I, when I heard, I looked at that stat, and not only the smallest, they're the smallest by far. Third and four. The pass is over the head. Uh, Brian Walters, so we'll see how she could come out yep. for a field goal try. Let me go back to that. They might be the smallest gym, but I think they got the most muscle because they play fast, they're physical. There's, there are absolutely no fat guys on this football team. And again, I don't know how you measure overall team speed, but they probably would be number one in that one. So Hauschka, it's going to be 46 yards. He's only... Missed one of his last 34 attempts at home. And this one is no good. He looked like he went through it so smooth and easy that maybe that's why he hooked it. Now, of course, I've never kicked a field goal, but I went, man, he just puts no effort into it. It makes it look so easy and smooth. Pulls it left. No, he never caught that cleanly. Nope. That means the Broncos take over at the 36. Field position. And you saw the grimace for Carroll as his team had the chance to go up three scores. And this is the best starting point of the day for Denver. They bring Ball back in. And they're going to Sanders. And Sanders wanted a flag. He had Maxwell on his back. Well, Peyton's trying to throw a back shoulder. Manning trying to throw a back shoulder pass. You've got what you want. The hands touch. That's, you know, it's, well, he cuts across. What do you think? Look, when you do it in slow motion, every pass in the NFL looks like pass interference. They saw it live on the field. you got to be more physical as a receiver. Second and ten. Peyton's got time, and he's got his man. Jim, that's what you got to do. Okay, there's the circumstances. They're going to let you play, then you got to go out there and fight. That's Demarius Thomas with his first catch of the game. And that was a good job coming back to the football. Demarius Thomas can use that size. He did, came back, and Peyton Manning put a little mustard on it and got it in there. A minute to go in the third quarter.
ball start. Offense number 74. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Called on him. Orlando Franklin. First offensive penalty of the game against Denver. Backs him up to first and 15. Payton rolling out. And down the middle and too steep it was for Thomas. As Payton threw across his body, had an open receiver. Yeah, he had him. He saw it. It was a, again, two tight ends trying to protect him and give me time, but a good job by Peyton Manning getting out of the pocket. They clean out the front side. Here comes Demarius. The ball gets away from Manning just enough. Good job by Demarius Thomas knocking it down, or there's going to be an interception. Second and 15. Coming in on Manning. Able to slide away from the pressure and get it over to Sanders, who tried to curl around Sherman and get away from him, but Richard with the tackle and a gain of 12. Pass protection is outstanding. Monte Ball just comes over and just takes it to Brandon Marshall. Manning steps up and gets the completion. So they punt it on their last three possession short series. They've got a third and three. Closing seconds of quarter three. Tammy is met right away. And denied by K.J. Wright in a loss of four to close out quarter number three. We'll return after this message and a word from your local station. Had no scoring in that third quarter. As you look at downtown Seattle, the city this past February celebrating its first world championship since the 1979 Sonics. Well, Lenny Wilkins took the title. Fourth down to start the fourth. Jim Nanceville sends Tracy Wilson. High snap, brought down by Holtwood. And Walter's fair catch at the seven. Well, Richard Sherman, we talked to him, Jim, and, you know, how he slipped in the draft, I don't know, but that always happens when you're evaluating these guys. Does a great job of reading the formation. He's to the top of the screen, sees the out route in good position, and then how about this play where receivers cross. These guys are so well-schooled and so smart, they pass it off and nobody to throw it to. Now, let me clear one thing up. Richard Sherman, oh, he was really beat last week. They just went after him, and I don't know what game anybody was watching, but that's not what I saw when I saw that San oh, Diego that, game. That came out of the San Diego Chargers locker room. Oh, they my called gosh. him just a normal guy. He's no shutdown corner. Well, let me tell you what. They're wrong because I try to find him. He gave up two passes in the game, and there was a couple other ones. He was about a fingertip away from picking them off. So when he's playing zone, it's up to the underneath guys sometimes. But even when he's in zone, he is a dangerous defender. And I don't care who the quarterback and receiver is, you don't want to go out there on a steady right. diet and throw the football against him. Hey, alert, 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 alert. Yeah. From the eight to start this series, up two touchdowns, Lynch. Beat up pretty good on that carry for no gain by Nate Irving and others. Week three continues tonight on NBC with Pittsburgh down at Carolina. Tomorrow night on ESPN, the Bears off that incredible comeback win last Sunday night. We'll have a Monday night affair at the New York Jets. This Denver defense has been pretty good. Two drives, but they've held a few times. And so far in the second half, no points allowed. No turnovers on the day by Seattle. Second and ten, and from behind, 
Wilson got hit by DeMarcus Ware just outside of the end zone, and the ball might be in the arms of Ware. How could he have held on to it with that hit? He never saw it. Ware did the right thing. Went for the sack, the strip, everything at once. And that was the play that have turned the game around, of course. The signal, it stays with Seattle. Well, Russell Wilson, I don't think he took his hands off the ball. So the fundamentals you learn from an early age, always keep two hands on the football. And they're not giving up in the scrum. Wilson aware. And look who has it. I'll tell you, DeMarcus gave it everything he had. Didn't he did. take that ball away? But he comes around. The coverage is there. I don't know what they were doing down the field. Oh, you know what? Russell Wilson at the last second saw him out of the corner of his eye, and that was a fumble. You can challenge this, too. That football came loose. It's on the ground. But you, you, why would you challenge it? Because well, you saw who came out of with the football. There's the ball, and if you've got to just show that DeMarcus Ware had the recovery, and I don't know if we could have seen it yet. Third and 17. Ball start. Offense number 76. After this is the goal, still third down. So there they were wrestling for it. Yeah, who's got it? You tell me right there. It looks like, Jim, it looks like DeMarcus Ware has his arms around it, too. Yeah, no that question. That ball was they, absolutely loose. Well, they both, you know, have their arms around it. But uh, it's third, cut, cut. just a foot out. Third and 17, and Ware has him. This might be a safety. He did not get out. What a job by the defense. And there it is, the 10 for defense comes up with the two-point play. Right away, penetration in the backfield. DeMarcus Ware, what a series for him. Sacks him, and then causes the safety. T.J. Ward spilled it. DeMarcus Ware made the play. Watch T.J. Ward hits Coleman. Spills him out and watch DeMarcus Ware make the play. The hit on Coleman by T.J. Ward made the running back switch his thought process, and DeMarcus Ware tackles him for the safety. And now it's 17-5, and a free kick by Seattle, and it is a big one. Emmanuel Sanders has to go all the way back to the goal line. Sanders to about the 23. 22-yard return. We're going to be heading back to D.C. come Thursday night. Thursday night football. The Giants and the Redskins. Now Cousins today, a quarterback over 400 yards in a shootout won by Philadelphia. The Giants defeated Houston. We'll have that game again. CBS NFL Network as well Thursday night. This Peyton Manning, the offense, it's not do or die. You don't want to take a chance and turn the football over. But the one thing, you've got to feel confident as a quarterback. You are getting very good protection against a good pass rushing team. Might have been a jump by Seattle. They shut the play down. Let's see if they say it was no neutral zone infraction. Encroachment. Defense number 92. <laughs> Was that your big No, not me. No, not first down. That way. <laughs> but, but, you know, let's go back to this offense. What do you want them to do? I think there is confidence here. Don't they, they threw some passes down the field. They caught them. They're, they're getting some positive stuff. They're being more aggressive. Somebody's got to take a routine play and make it into a special play. There you see Peyton, 41 straight games with at least one touchdown pass. As Denver has the first down, ball's out at the end. Smartly covered up by Clady, just in case. 
Do they rule him down? If they rule Sanders down, it's going to be a first down, and that's Forward. what they're going to give him. Forward progress was stopped, and this is what they do on the defensive side. Forward progress is stopped, so it doesn't matter. The play's over, it's a completion. And it's a ninth catch of the game for Sanders. Over there, Thomas. This is a play that so often is an explosive play for Denver, but Seattle was braced for it. Chancellor, the first to hit Thomas. No chance. Don't call another one. Uh, I don't know how many screens he's thrown outside today. If they've gained more than one yard, I, I don't know. They're ready for the screen game. They worked very hard against it. They saw it in the Super Bowl. They're actually defensing it better here today. Second and ten. Peyton with a little extra on that one to Julius Thomas. And that's just his second catch. He goes for six. Nothing's easy, is it, Jim? Uh, every catch, they are being contested by the defense. Third down. Nobody has more short yardage throws than the Denver Broncos offense. Well, they better complete one of them here because they need to get to the 45 for the first. Unless they want to give it back to the home team, and that's what's going to happen. That was in the direction of Tammy. That time the pressure got there, and the Seattle defense made a mistake. Nobody covers Thomas. But he just didn't have time. He saw this be the quarterback. Oh, they're right in front. Never has time to sit up and throw the football. And the defender was in front of the tight end anyway. Peyton had to absorb two pretty good hits. Yeah, he did. Would like to pin the Seahawks and they'll start from the 13 yard line after a 46 yard boot. Pete Carroll loving the way his defense stood up to that challenge. Just a little outside of 11 minutes to go. Here at this pulsating stadium that as Russell Wilson said everybody who's a sports fan ought to put it on their bucket list to once come here and just experience the intensity and the audio level of the crowd here as he fires it in the air and he's picked off. He's picked off by Harris, Chris Harris Jr. And the Denver defense comes up with another big play here in the fourth. They, it, yes. It was tipped by Tlaib. Tlaib looking at the quarterback, fell off his guy and gets the tip. Russell Wilson took a chance. Of course, he didn't see him. Good pass protection, and he rears back. He's going to rip it. And Tlaib comes from the outside and tips it up. Talked about that at halftime. Watch him on the outside, top of your screen. Beautiful job. Understanding what you have to do. You got a safety behind you. Your guy goes deep. You let him go. You fall inside to the inside receiver, and you cause the interception. That's the first pass interception thrown by Wilson in over six games going back to an Arizona game last December and it's regular and post and now Manning and the Broncos are set up in the red zone at the 19 that ball is tipped and almost intercepted right back they rule it incomplete KJ Wright Pass was intended for ball, and it got tipped around. Well, you know, listen, this is what the San Diego Chargers did. They looked down the field. If it's not open, get it to the running back. But today, it's just not working for the Denver Broncos the way it did for the Chargers, mainly because Denver is not running the football. But whatever you've got that you haven't used, now it's time to do it. It's man-to-man -man coverage. It was Jordan Hill who deflected it at the line and pass. Down to the 10 goes to Demarius Thomas. It'll be third and a long one. Good job by Demarius Thomas. Peyton was going to throw it to the running back. He was not open. And really, as he was throwing, changed it and still got it to Demarius Thomas. And it looked like the football was tipped. For the second straight play, but this one goes for a completion. Third and one. 
And that's enough for the first with Monte Ball. Well, now you're in four down territory, too. You've got to think that way almost. Still a lot of time to go. You got your timeouts. Yeah, field goal down here would still leave them two scores, two scores behind. Down. That's right. On first and goal. Payton to the three. It's ball. Tackled right on the spot. Gain of five. Well, I was bragging about the pass protection, but it's turned up. They are getting there quick. Peyton Manning dumps it to the running back, and there are two excellent outside pass rushers there to meet Peyton Manning. Michael Bennett, Cliff Averill. Second and goal. Shuffle pass to Julius Thomas. And it's wide open for the touchdown. Very clever. They've seen that in the past. And they brought that back out. The defense has held this game together. And finally, the Broncos block it, pull the guard. Julius Thomas follows inside. Good call by Adam Gase, the offensive coordinator. And Thomas now with five touchdowns here in week three of the season. Peyton, 42 consecutive games with at least one touchdown thrown. Now, Vasquez, who you saw help lead Julius Thomas into the end zone, he took a knee on the way to the sideline. Well, he is just inside with Ramirez and Vasquez. They are as tough as it comes in the NFL. Peyton Manning has talked to us about them many times. They're, they're like a tandem. They double-team block. They communicate great. And you need smart, tough offensive linemen to have success in this league, no doubt. They'll go for the one here. And McManus makes it. Nine points in three minutes and 47 seconds. All ignited by the Denver defense. First to safety, and then an interception that led to this touchdown pass. Denver's first touchdown of the day. Julius Thomas with the touchdown catch. And look at how this stacks up for a tight end through three games all time. No one's had more. Yep, he's off to a great start. And Jim, kicking that extra point was huge for the Broncos. Why? Seattle kicks a field goal. They're only down eight. If you'd have went for two and you missed, you'd be down nine and two scores. Oh, Harvin doing a little tiptoe high wire act. And he took it out of the end zone. And paid a penalty for that. Punished near the nine by Steven Johnson. Boy, there were some games early today, including this wild one with Philadelphia winning over Washington. Foles with three touchdown passes. What a comeback by Jason Garrett's Cowboys, who everybody was killing after week one. All the experts, right. everybody says the same old thing, gets all that momentum going. Now the Cowboys win two straight road games. Bengals do, in fact, trounce the Titans. And Baltimore wins. At the very end, heartbreaker for Cleveland and yep. for Baltimore. Uh, some bad news is Dennis Pitta, their tight end, and often the favorite target of Joe Flacco. Looks like dislocated hip, same injury that made him miss most of last year as Lynch is out for about seven, but there is a flag. What'd you make of that Cowboys comeback today? Holding, offense number 76. After this is the goal. First I was probably one of those guys getting on him, so that's what I was thinking about. <laughs> but here we go. Key names. plays. A keep to lead. Really well played. Look at him looking back inside. He frees up. They read it and played the defense perfectly, and they got rewarded. Watch the right guard. He pulls. Here he comes around. Good job. Blocked that time by Ramirez. Pulled and made the block. That Allow Thomas to come around. Well, this has been dangerous territory for the Seattle offense in this quarter. And again, backed up after Harvin's poor decision from the end zone. They left it for the backup receiver, Ryan Walters. And he's got 11. Give him a little room. Yeah, you can see it's they do these 
underneath passes. It's really a version of what Bill Walsh brought to the San Francisco 49ers back in 1979 where Roger Craig and they would switch positions. They always catch the play actions out of the backfield going to the right side. And Daryl Bevel runs that same type of offense and it gets Seattle out of trouble a lot. It was first and 14, that went for 11. Second and third. And that was a pass going right back to the man who caught the last one, Walters. Good coverage by Chris Harris. Russell Wilson threw it exactly where he wanted it, away and out of bounds. How about this third down coming up? With 8.21 to play, and taking the snap just outside the 15. Look at those total yards. Darrell Bevel, what's he going to do here? I know this, the defense, the number one thing. I would blitz and make Russell Wilson stay in the pocket. You can't let him out of pocket, let him out and get a first down here with a run. First down, and again, Walters, the receiver. That one for 16. Well, Jim, here's what happens. Top of your screen, he's going to come. Chris Harris is trying to stay with him, watch him fight his way through all the people. There it is. Now, look, look at the defenders. Your own players are in the way, and Chris Harris is furious because it's such a common play in a situation like that and nobody's there to help him out. And it's impossible for him to be right next to the receiver. Good play call by Darrell Bevel. A fake on first down to Lynch. And now rolling away and completing the throw to Coleman. And he's got a first down, the fullback for the second catch of the season. And a gain of 13. Well, it's just so many plays are well defense. And then you give up something positive. Derek Wolf gets pressure. You make Russell Wilson move. And once again, on the move, they get a first down out of a play where you think you did almost everything right, except you can't keep the quarterback in the pocket. Boy, at one time, they were back at the five after a penalty. But they moved it all the way out to the 41. The seven minutes left. First down run by Turbin for no gain. Now, Jim, you know this offense of Seattle, it's basic, I'd say it's um, conservative if you wanted to give it a label. I don't know if that's fair or not, but you got to admire what they did here. Everything was going against them, and they came out and were the aggressors. And right from the start, and being the aggressors has paid off. They've changed field position, they've slowed the Denver defense down, and now they have rhythm on the offensive side. Second and ten. A play action. Wilson retreating again. Way back. He's going to go for the incompletion. The throw away. How about that job by Von Miller? He's got to come out of the game after that. All over him. Chases him. Watch 58. Gets pushed. Now he's going to fall down. And watch this. Up and still makes him throw the football away. Look down the field, was there anything open? And I think the answer is going to be no. Good job by Roby. And Russell Wilson was looking. Boy, nice job by Chris Harris. Tlaib was out for a couple of plays. Now he's back on the field. This third and ten. That's too steep. He was open. Brian Walters was open, but the pressure forced the poor throw. It was Nate Irving who influenced the incompletion. Well, they learned from the last third down that was big. They send the blitz, and I uh, couldn't hit them all, but they get to Russell Wilson. They make him throw it before he's ready, and that's what happens. What a job by Nate Irving. But even though the receiver's open, when you get pressure on a the quarterback, they're going to throw the football off target sometimes. Ryan to punt for the sixth time. Four of his five have pinned the Broncos inside the 20. This one good as well, but only the 19. And his burst makes the fair catch. 41-yard punt. Manning coming back out, down five with six to play.
Denver came into this quarter down 14. Now has the ball. Could drive down the field and take the lead if they found the end zone again. If you were Adam Gaze, the offensive coordinator, what would be the mindset with six minutes? Well, you want to pick it down the field, Jim. Still throw underneath. That's what's open. Well, there it is underneath, Phil. Welker. And he... So good after the catch, and he's got a first down, and he's got 13 on the play. New England put this play in years ago. Welker comes across. The people on the right side I couldn't get to. They're blockers down the field. It's a screen, really, to the middle of the field. Years ago, New England started. Now everybody in football tries to run it. Good opening play. Gets you going, gets the offensive line right in rhythm. Manning trips as he was approaching his teammate Ball. What was that supposed to be? I think it was going to be a draw. It's going to be an outside draw. But here comes K.J. Wright. And it, here's what happened. It was a blitz. Manning saw K.J. Wright and said, I better not hand it off because he was afraid of the fumble. They thought the pass rushers would be going wide. That's why they were going to run that draw, Jim. And it lost seven, second and 17, with five minutes remaining. There's your draw. It's ball in a sprint. Out to the 35. Clady helped that one go for nine, but third down's coming up. I don't expect the Seahawks to take a chance here. This is what we've talked about all day. Drop back, make him throw it, tackle the runner or the receiver before he gets the first down. Need to get to the 42 for a first. And they got it. Sanders. What a catch. And they put. Cliff Averill and Michael Bennett on the same side to get quick pressure. Manning catches it and puts it in there. What a catch by Sanders. His 10th catch of the game, and he's over 100. Turned, made the catch, and went to the ground. What a job. That's what it takes. It takes great plays to beat a team like this. First 100-yard receiver allowed by Seattle in 14 games. First down, underneath, Welker with a block, and Welker takes it to the 36. It was Julius Thomas who helped free him up the middle for 15. Same play as the other side. Here comes Welker. Watch the blockers go up the field and do it, Jim, real quick. They're going to block. Here comes the receiver underneath. Perfect timing. Really well executed that time. Yeah, Thomas and Monte ball throwing blocks there. Manning's hit his last six passes. First down and open. It's Welker. And Welker making his presence felt here in his return game after being reinstated midweek. What's this drive doing? It's starting to tire the pass rush out. Now Peyton Manning can catch it and Wes Welker say he's feeling it right now, wouldn't you say? Oh, no question. Six catches for 60 yards. That one good for 13. For now, Denver, take your time. From the 23. They go with ball, and it's a loss of one. What a play. Just busting up the middle was Kevin Williams. Yep. Free agent Kevin Williams comes to the Minnesota Vikings. Another really big inside presence kind of defensive tackle that was a good call I was expecting run trying to get four or five yards and keep the situations in favor of the offense second and 11 and it's pass batted down near the first down marker it was batted down Sherman on the coverage to Marius Thomas the target the margin of error is so small. Watch this. It's right on target. Boy, nice play by Richard Sherman. 
a little bit like a keep to lead. They look at the quarterback and the receiver at the same time. Third and 11. And a timeout called by Denver. Well, next weekend on CBS, regional action. Carolina and Baltimore over at Wembley Stadium. Miami will take on Oakland. Well, some will see Jacksonville out at San Diego. All beginning with the NFL today at noon Eastern. Well, I think it's four down territory. I really do, Jim, and that's one of the reasons why they called the timeout. To think that if you kick the field goal, then you then you have to stop Seattle. You got one try to get a chance in from there. So I think John Fox should call the timeout. You try to settle everybody down. You come up with a plan. You got this extra minute to think. Try to get some yards on this play, which opens up many possibilities then on fourth down for you. One last word from Adam Gase. You don't think about this. It's been a slugfest, and the Broncos stayed patient, and they found a way to get back into this. That's what they wanted to do. Fight them, be patient, and have a chance late to win this game. Two best pass rushers. Here they are. Third and 11. The Manning's pass is intercepted. Intercepted by Chancellor. And Chancellor's across the 40 to the 50. And gets tangled up by Ramirez. throw a seam here he goes up the seam there's chancellor he's eyeing the quarterback falls back boy and look at earl thomas how fast he's coming i don't know if there's any way they're going to complete that pass no matter what they played seattle defense drop back read the quarterback and react and cam chancellor jim six foot three four long arms hard to throw over the top of him Boy, I was looking at your all 22 and I could see Emmanuel Sanders on the other side of the field, his arms up in the air, like, oh, I was open. A 52 yard return. Now, this game's not over. You got Seattle with the football at the Denver 35. That's right. You got the two minute warning and you got the Broncos with two timeouts. There we go, Sanders. Now, watch him here. Going across the field. Well, it happens. You know, another. if Peyton Manning would have looked at him, remember, that defender you saw was going to come towards him and try to play. But I, I understand why he threw those arms up. No use talking to Peyton. Be, be happy with what your football team just did. Three hundred and eighty passes since the last time Peyton threw an interception in this month and that was his first road game as a Bronco down in Atlanta when he had the three right at the top of that game. Yeah I remember that well they got caught by some different defenses but you know when the pressure's on and the moment is there and that's what it was just then. They were going to West Welker but the Seahawks played a defense that they've probably done a thousand times already in training camp in this year. So you can play it, you can be smart, and you can react. You know, they came out of that timeout. We saw Peyton and Adam Gaze have a, another exchange. Peyton trotted over to the sideline. And then I saw Welker replace at the last moment Tammy. So Welker was late getting onto the field. And a sudden change in what they were going to do there. Yeah. Well, as that replay showed, you said it right. Maybe Sanders is the guy should have looked at coming across. 
But that seam pass, no matter what, it was not going to be completed. 2-12 to play. And it's Lynch. Breaks a tackle. Makes a lateral move near another first. He got away from Raheem Moore. The ball at the end came out. But they're ruling him down. You can see Phil McKinley, the head linesman, emphatically pointing that he was down as we reach the two-minute warning. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 21. Called on to lead. Right in front of the officials. Stephen Hauschka has had four or five imaginary kicks during this timeout. Remember, it's first down for Seattle, but, you know, it could end up if Denver uses his timeouts and is able to force a fourth down field goal, Hauschka just taking advantage of the time and getting a little mental practice in. And that's got to be Denver's plan right now. How much time could they have left if they're able to somehow stop Seattle here and have them have to attempt a field goal? I think if it goes the way Denver wants, they can have about a minute to a minute five left, Jim, when this is all over. That's what you would hope for. Let's look at the last play. And... Did they rule him down? Was there a fumble? They definitely ruled him down. And then on top of it was the personal foul penalty by Tlaib. So the snap from the 13. And it's Lynch into the arms of Irving for three. And the quick timeout by the Broncos, leaving them with one. I think the first thing I want to say, Denver proved a lot here today, regardless of the outcome, that they could come in here against, you know, so-called one of the most physical teams, probably the most physical team in the NFL. And everybody looks at the Denver Broncos and says they're a finesse team. Well, I think John Fox and his defense and a lot of them, the team proved that they're more than that. And that's, I think that was part of their goal as a football team uh, coming up here today to prove to everybody that they could play a different style of football, Jim. And they kept telling us over and over again last night to a man. They did not consider this to be a revenge game, no. this rematch. Because it's, it's the third game of the year. Yeah. That's why. And he said even if you win, it's not like you're going to make up for losing a Super Bowl. And as John Fox said, there's a fire in our belly with that Super Bowl loss. And that's something that will only go away if they go back and win it this year. Second and seven. The right Lynch. Wolf has him on the side. Be careful here. As Irving is able to finish him off, lost the helmet, lost the mouthpiece. But gained a yard. Tonight on 60 Minutes, a report that will help you better understand the terror group ISIS. Then the premiere of Madam Secretary, followed by an all new Good Wife, plus an encore presentation of Madam Secretary, only CBS. And again, timeout, Denver's last. That's why that first down and that personal foul were big plays. Cost you valuable time. Now, if you're the Denver defense, here's what you do. You play run all the way. And if you have containment, if Russell Wilson gets outside of you on a keeper or anything like that. Would you see Seattle throwing the football here with Denver out of timeouts? Or would you just go ahead and, uh, you know, if you come up short, you're still going to be able to run off. A lot of time. Well, if you complete it, and then look, if they throw the football, it's going to be man-to-man -man coverage, so it's not going to be easy to get, get these completions. I would think they would run it, play it by the book. Your defense has been great. Why take the chance and get Peyton Manning 40 extra seconds? They run it with Lynch, and he stopped. Right away, Ward coming up. And Hauschka, after all that practice in the last break, 
is going to get a chance to come out here and add three more. Well, Seattle played it exactly what, how you would expect them to do it. To do it. And now Denver is going to get basically one minute, maybe a second or two more when he gets paid Manning gets back on the offensive side. If they make the field goal. Here's Pete. And he'll stop it at 104. Well, the first touchdown of the game came in the second quarter. 39 yards to lock it. The Seattle defense has held ball to 38 yards on 14 carries. But the Denver defense. Safety, interception. Then the touchdown toss, the shovel pass to Julius Thomas. And then with Denver driving, trying to take the lead, Chancellor with the theft. Hauschka, back in 2010, actually spent four games as the Broncos kicker. Came to Seattle in 2011, and he's been a good one. Although he missed today, missed from 46. A rarity for him is from 28 to make it an eight-point game. Hauschka's kick is good. I asked you several plays ago, what's Denver's best hope if they can hold them to a field goal? And you said, about a minute left on the clock. You're off by a second. Uh, I'm always off a little bit. <laughs> yeah. That's what I've been accused of. But For those of you expecting to see 60 minutes, you're watching the NFL on CBS, the Broncos, and the Seahawks. Jim Nance along with Bill Sims and Tracy Wolfson. 60 minutes will be seen in its entirety immediately after the game, except on the West Coast. Well, the big thing here for the Seahawks, can they kick it out the back of the end zone? That's, if they don't, if you're the Denver Broncos, you take a chance on a return, Jim, because that maybe is your best chance and best way to get a big play to get your field position and to pick up some easy yards. And of course, for the kicking team, be alert for a throwback, a reverse. Everybody always has those plays in their return game. That's Andre Caldwell. He's only had one return opportunity this year. Of course, the thin air at Denver, most of the time it's touchbacks, but his one return was a 54-yarder. Man, a lot of tension in this game. I love it. It's just... The whole it's way. kind of good to, yeah, yeah. the whole way you could feel the tension in the stadium and uh, just the way the game was played, low scoring. When you have low scoring, now you know. It makes everybody, I think, you get a little more tense as a coach because you know one play can turn it around and cost you the game. Where Seattle had intensity for the entire game. Back on February the second, going on to win 43 to 8, the only game in the history of the NFL, regular season or postseason, ever to end on that exact score of 43 to 8. But this one has been interesting from the get-go. Hauschka, he flies it five yards through the back of the end zone, and Manning and the Broncos will have to go 80 yards with no timeouts in 59 seconds, find the end zone, and convert a two-point try to send this game to overtime. That's the goal right now, going against this defense in this incredible environment here in Seattle. Well, this is a situation for Peyton Manning, and he knows, and he's not afraid, and he's not afraid of the numbers. you got to take a chance. Going to two yards over the middle will not work. So if you have even a one in five chance of completing something down the field, you go for it. Gonna slide left and launch it down the field. Open is Sanders. And he tried to catch it on his back and there was a collision with both Chancellor and Burley. Couple of players shaken up. I'll tell you, they had it. 
Peyton Manning moves. Watch Sanders goes out. He sees the quarterback. Oh, he's got a little move going. A lot of contact. We Burley here, 28, gets hit by his teammate. Seattle just got charged a timeout because uh, of Burley's injury. And they're, because of the timeout, they're going to be able to keep him on the field. Uh, he's going he's to come off. Yep. That was a good idea at that time. Sanders has run a few outside breaking routes, and he turned up, and he had it. If Manning would just put just a touch more, throwing that with a little power, they're going to get a first down, big game. Josh Thomas is in for Burley. play happens on the second Peyton Manning's move at same play he replaces what a nice route and a good execution and a spike to stop it at 31 that pass play to Sanders went for 42 second man through the zone that's what you call it the rules broke down Maxwell followed Demarius Thomas inside that's why Sanders was open Hillman falling as the pass was headed his way, and it would not have been for much of a gain anyway and would have taken a lot of time because they were closing in on him anyway. Oh, yeah. That was a good reason. That's a good thing that he fell down. Take your time. If it's tackled in bounds, you must spike the ball as fast as you can. Thomas got the feet down. Beautiful. And a first down after the 12-yard gain. To the sideline, good timing. Again, inside two minutes, Booth reviews. Both feet down. If needed, ball at the 26. I would not be surprised to see that play. Sanders to the right side, same play that we saw earlier. With 24 seconds to go. Manning looking, going way down the field. Inside and a touchdown to Jacob Tammy. And a two-point conversion away from tying the game. Really well executed. He went, it was the same thought process that he did earlier. The corners are going inside, and the second guy through is open. And that time, Peyton Manning creased it. And now the two-point try. It'll come down to this. Here he goes, just watching right there, Jim. That's how he gets open. Second man through, they follow him. For the tie, Manning looking back at the end zone, and it is caught to tie the game to Marius Thomas. What a play. We saw something similar to it the first time they were down there. 80 yards in 41 seconds with no timeouts. And get... watch the feet. Two, he's down. That's, he's inbounds, holds the football. What a job, Peyton Manning, the pass protection. Two. With Sherman right there. Thomas hanging out with no room to spare in the back of the end zone. 
you thought they were bringing Sanders across the formation to pick. In other words, to get him outside where the defense widened and the fact that they widened allowed that inside move by Demarius Thomas for him to have that window to catch the football. And Peyton Manning used his height, threw over the top, and finds Thomas in the back of the end zone. That was really, again, it was a double-edged play. If it was zone, it goes to Demarius Thomas. Feet are definitely in. Demarius Thomas, who had been silenced almost the entire way, comes to life in the fourth quarter. And no one can find anything that shows evidence otherwise. That has tied the game at 20. But they are, of course, still reviewing it. Jim, let's watch it. Here's Sanders. If it's man-to-man, -man, they're going to pick for him. But it's not. Here's uh, Sherman. Thomas is going to go out here and go to the back. So it has both things that you want. No matter what they play, you have a chance. There's So Sanders is going outside, not there. How about that little double move? Watch Demarius Thomas, 88. Fakes up the field, comes inside. And that's why you always want a big receiver down in the red zone so you can throw it to the back of the end zone for those type of plays. We see it with New England so many years, Calvin Johnson and Demarius Thomas that time. That was the play selection and design was unbelievable. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The extra point is good. I've done a lot of games here, Jim, or with Denver Broncos. They showed us plays that we have never seen. I have not seen those. Of course, they haven't been in that situation too often, but to have those ready and to bring them out was outstanding. 17 points in the fourth quarter. Manning has just thrown his 100th touchdown pass as a Bronco. 499 now in his career. This game completely turning around on a safety early in the fourth quarter. But to go 80 yards, 41 seconds, and no timeouts. Unbelievable. And to have those plays because they were not ready for him. Listen, I haven't seen him. That shows you how big that library of plays the Broncos have, how big it is. You see Harvin elects to take a knee with 18 seconds left in regulation. And they just caught him. The corners both times followed their receiver inside. And when they followed inside, who's got the receiver that's in that goes up the sideline? And, man, that was pretty. He looked it off. This is a great design play. And, boy, Manny, what patience, waits. Pete Carroll's emotions, Jim. He doesn't hide them. He's in disbelief, as are nearly 70,000 here in Seattle. And the Seahawks were going to pitch this ball back to the officials and go to the overtime. So they did those routes really three times, and they had a chance to hit all three. They hit two of them, and it won them, gave them a chance here to go into overtime. I guarantee you, as much as you can go over, Pete Carroll has not gone over those type of plays with his defense. Of course, a couple of years ago, the overtime rules were switched around, and Denver played that playoff game against Pittsburgh where they won on the 80-yard pass from Tebow to Demarius Thomas to get the six on the first possession to close it out. But Peyton's case in overtime, he hasn't won an overtime game actually in 10 years, back in 04 when the Colts went against San Diego. I'll tell you, that was unbelievable, that finish. Good afternoon, gentlemen. We're now in sudden death. Modified sudden death overtime. Denver, you're still the visitors. Both teams will have two timeouts. All replays are upstairs. Okay, both teams will have an opportunity to possess the ball unless the first team scores a touchdown. We'll play fourth quarter timing rules, maximum one quarter. Any questions? Good luck. Ball is called tails. It is hands. You want the ball. Never turn around. Tavares Jackson like out there for the Seahawks. 
We're going to overtime after a remarkable fourth quarter comeback. Fourth quarter started Seattle leading at 17 to 3. Now you see this, you say, well, how in the world do they play yeah. six overtime games? They used to be divisional opponents in the AFC West. Right. Played twice a year for a number of years. Of course, there's Harvin. He didn't have a chance to do what he did to start the second half back, back in New Jersey, but not going to be. We're going to start at the 20. Always wonder about this, Jim. If you win the coin toss, do you, do you kick off? Because oh, if they kick a field goal, then you know what you have to do. You get that extra down, but you can't take that chance. Because the other team scores a touchdown, you're in trouble. Like I said, the first game where these overtime rules applied, right. the tweak was Denver against Pittsburgh in the playoffs, and yeah. it ended after a play, One play. With, a, with a Denver 80-yard touchdown. And three years ago. seen that today that play with different people fake it roll right throw it underneath how about this Seattle gonna go with the hurry up offense to keep their to get it moving to get their momentum and to simplify the defense it's it it's away and then throws in a slip complete Defended by Moore. It was thrown to Baldwin. Some stiff arm Russell Wilson had that time. So did you think at the start of the fourth quarter we had a game destined for overtime? How about at 17-5? Could you figure it out? Mathematically, we could see of all things uh, an overtime game as Hauschka is going through some planks. Yeah. Well, you know, just so many little decisions in the game. John Fox, quick thinking, kick the extra point instead of just a knee-jerk reaction going for two. Second and ten, Lynch. Wrestled down, gain of six or seven. Boy, late in the game, here we are in overtime. Marshawn Lynch still can run with power. And I marvel at that. I thought his running against Green Bay opening game was his the difference and why they beat Green Bay here on that Thursday night. Denver's defense, I believe you play safe here. You don't try to pressure. Don't give up the big play. Third and three. And Wilson's going to run for it. And he's going to make it. He was trying to beat Nate Irving to the first down marker, and he pulls it off. New set of downs. You can't lose containment. Wolf goes inside. Nobody's out there. Nate Irving can't chase him down. The coverage is good. They're trying to little pick. The receiver comes underneath. He's not open, and Russell Wilson just runs for the first down. If you're the edge rusher, you've got to at least make him go forward and not outside. And again, a touchdown would end the game. The field goal, Denver guaranteed, in that case, a possession. As Wilson, on the one throws it for another hookup to Curse. They rule it a catch in a gain of 12. Yeah, he was open the whole time. I don't know why Russell Wilson didn't look. He was looking back inside. But a keep to lead, playing very safe and off. Doesn't want to take a chance and give up the big play. Take the turbo, keeping it. And Wilson slides to the 40 for five. You know, too, it is amazing. Early in the year, players are now just really rounded into really good game shape, Jim, but these drives, you can see it when you watch the field. Pass rushers have about three or four explosions in them. And when that's over, man, you're just trying to hang on out there. Hard to get to the quarterback when you have to do it time after time. 
Second and five. Looks to Harvey. And where did this might be? Looks like it might be another first. It's a good safe play. Blocking down the field. I'll tell you what, good job by Chris Harris. Because these Seattle, Seattle receivers are the best blocking, well, it's one of the two best blocking set of wide receivers in the NFL. The other set I'm talking about is with Denver. Screen plays, they are outstanding blockers for the pass catcher. Working it down the field, another first down. And is toppled inside the 30 by Kayvon Webster. Well, what do you do, Jim? You're going to give it to Percy Harvin? Is it Russell Wilson going to keep it? Or Marshawn, Marshawn Lynch right up the middle? A lot to try to defend when they put Percy Harvin in motion. A lot of distraction, then a power run. Second and three. As Wolf was giving chase. Well, the coverage was good down the field. Nowhere to go. A keep to leave on his guy, and Russell Wilson did the smart thing. Throws it away. If they don't pick up any yardage here on third down, it would be about a 47-yard field goal attempt by Hauschka. Yeah, they'll of course I I think there's no doubt they'll kick it. Oh, no, no question. They won't go for it on court. Here comes a pressure defense. Here comes the pressure. And Wilson smartly reaches across. Uh, he had it anyway, but a flag is out on the far side of the field. They had a free runner up the middle. And they didn't contain him. It was the perfect def defensive call. Holding. Defense number 25. Five yards break from the end of the run. Automatic first down. It looks like Corey Nelson up the middle, unblocked. Nobody on the outside. The play stands, they said, plus the penalty. So they add that on, and it puts it at the 19. 19 yards away from closing this game out and denying Peyton a chance to match anything or to handle it as Wilson steps up, and he's going to run with it again. And he's got another five or six. Wilson. They haven't done it today, but they need to do it. They need to play man-to-man -man coverage, and they have to have a spy on Russell Wilson. So in other words, somebody in the middle of the field that they can't block, so when he breaks right or left, they can go flying, chase him down, and not let him pick up these yards. They're trying to do a double move to win the game, well covered by T.J. Ward. But if you have a spy for Russell Wilson, it's time to use it. Wilson has rushed for 21 yards on this drive to open up overtime. San Diego did it against him last week a couple of times, and it worked well. And hold on. Whistle dead. Timeout. Timeout called by Seattle. First charge, timeout. Seattle. 30 second timeout. Well, some drive. It's been very methodical, and it's looked easy. Guys get fatigued, and when you're fatigued, it always works to the favor of the offense. Well, we'll talk about fatigue and Seattle and what they're coming off of last yeah. week. Tonight on CBS again, 60 Minutes, and then the series premiere of Madam Secretary, an all-new Good Wife, coming up here on America's number one network. This, if this ends, in Seattle's case, with just a field goal, and Denver will get the chance to have its swing at the plate, so to speak.
at least from Seattle's standpoint, the defense is getting a chance to catch his breath. This right. is a team that last week was on the field in a heat index over 115 degrees down in Seattle. That whole team was virtually taking IVs. IVs before the game, halftime, and during the game. And it looked as if maybe today by the fourth quarter, well, they've had that, few, that fatigue was starting to factor in. They've had a few people go in today. Now, what that timeout did, let's don't forget, it let Denver catch their breath also. That's, I, I was saying at San Diego last week. So it's a big play here again, second and four. As Wilson is an open man. And it's Hogan setting up goal to go. Well, somewhere up there, Bill Walsh is saying that the stuff that I did 30-some years ago was still working. All they did this time, Percy Harbin was on the right, went across and then came back. It's what they started to drive off with, and hey, you know why it works? Because you're worried about the run, you're worried about the mobile quarterback, and then you got maybe the fastest guy in the NFL you're throwing it to. standing around because they just want the touchdown to be confirmed before they head to the locker room. Benovich on the field has just finally raised his arms. Denver's still standing around. I don't think there's any doubt as he flies into the end zone. What a push by the offensive line. What a game. 80 yards they drive in 13 plays and never give Manning and the Broncos offense a chance to touch it in overtime. What a game. Sweezy with an unbelievable block, opens it up. How about the receiver coming inside and getting the block to Lynch gets the touchdown. The final score in overtime, Seattle 26 and Denver 20. Tonight on CBS begins with 60 minutes, followed by Madam Secretary and the good wife. For Phil Sims, Tracy Wolfson, and all the crew, Jim Nance saying so long from Seattle. You've been watching the NFL on CBS.